Hi, so um, today I'm going to show you how I do my rolled rim bowls and I'm working with Tacoma Clay Art Center, uh, Darcy's Mica Clay, which is an earthenware clay and really super, super nice to work with. I can't tell you how much I love throwing with this clay. It's, it's beautiful, very plastic and nice. I have a line of work that those of you that have read my book will, will know about. It's called uh, the peasant wear line. And unfortunately, I don't get a chance to work with it very often because you have to clean everything up when you're working with the red clay and it's earthenware. Normally I'm working with high fire clay. Uh, but I'm treating myself to uh, a little uh, binge throwing with the peasant wear clay. First, I'm gonna show you how I do the rolled rims and then I'm gonna show you how you can turn it into a spout bowl. There we go, centered. Let's see. Down to about a half inch from the bottom. Or I'm just gonna pull it across a little bit. And I'm pulling up in a sort of a V-shaped way because that's the way I want the bowl to go is to flare outwards. The main mistake people make when they're doing these rolled rims is they make them too small. Um, Go for it, like make it a nice big fat rim. I'm uh, taking this finger and I'm just kind of pushing it underneath right, right there. Sort of pushing up. There's your ring. Now, when I first started doing these uh, kind of bowls, at this stage, I would generally go to shape the bowl and tidy up the outside with a metal rib. I've started doing it a little bit differently lately. So I've just found that if I leave taking the throwing rings off to later, it's a bit more of a challenge because right now the clay is still a little thicker. So instead of doing the outside first and then taking off the throwing rings, I'm actually doing the throwing rings first. So I'm gonna take one of these mud tools and I'm just gonna slowly work my way down and I'm just pushing outwards to make a nice round shape. So now I'm just sort of working my way up with the rib again. And as you can see, pretty smooth. Good enough, as we say. Now I have to make it nice and wet again. And I'm gonna shape the outside. And before that, I'm just gonna make a little bit of a line here for the, the rim. And I, I want this line to be nice and sharp uh, for a number of reasons, but one of them is gonna become quite evident when we go to glaze the bowl uh, because I'm going to leave the outside unglazed and I'm going to glaze the inside in this rim and then that puts a nice nice line for the glaze to stop at. And I'm just pushing out on the inside with my hand there. I'm not using the tips of my finger now, I'm using this part just like that so, so I don't uh, put more throwing rings in. Alrighty, so there we go. Um, nice and easy. I'm gonna take my kidney and I'm just gonna smooth off the inside again. And then I'm going back up with it. And that nice smooth surface. And now I'm gonna do the same on the outside. So I'm gonna take the flatter edge of the mud tool this time. And I'm just gonna make sure, because I'm not gonna glaze the outside, I want this to be nice and smooth and all scratches taken away. So there we go. That makes a very nice uh, serving bowl as it is. Uh, but say you wanna turn this into a spout bowl. Two fingers on the side like so, and now I'm pushing that way. And I'm gonna have my finger here, and I'm gonna pull. So there we go. So that's the beginning of the spout. Now, if you're looking at that spout, you're probably thinking, well, that's a pretty thick, fat spout. Everything's gonna come, you know, sploshing out of it. Uh, but I am going to fettle it. Kind of like a baking show, I have some bowls that I made yesterday that are already trimmed. And now I'm gonna show you how I carve the spout. <laughs> hey, bobby pins. Ooh, why so quilly? Ooh, why so quilly? Is it like, middle of the day or something and you're nocturnal? Oh, there we go. Here we go. We have a, a spout bowl that I, 
I made yesterday. And you can see there's a little bit of the finger marks left from uh, when I made the spout originally. So those are really easy to take off. You just sort of give it a little, give it a little rub. Make a nice round, round edge there. And I'm just gonna put it down. Take my fettling knife and I'm just gonna put my fingers back there for support and carve. There we go. Now sometimes when I'm doing this I'll get it a little lopsided so I'll just sort of lean back and take a better look. Now I'll take my little griblies out. So now you just take your sponge Make it nice and wet. Oh, and if by chance you get a little line in here, say you didn't seal up your uh, rolled rim tight enough and there's a little crack, I just put it, work a little clay into it and uh, usually that takes care of it. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna make that nice and smooth and then just take my finger and make a nice spout for the, the liquid or batter or whatever. Like I make my pancakes in these. Um, and I, I just love these spout bowls. I just find they're just so, so handy. And they're also just really nice as a serving bowl on the table. Okay, now tidy up the inside where I drop those little bits in. And pretty much that's it. Uh, until we glaze the piece, which will be of course later on. Now, when I'm doing these spout bowls and the serving bowls, Usually I do three of them, and I'll do one that's two and a half pounds, then one that's four pounds, and one that's five and a half pounds. And then if I do enough of them, usually I can put them into sets of three where they'll stack inside each other. Um, but I don't measure as I'm throwing, so um, sometimes they, they fit nicely, sometimes they don't. But if you make enough of them, you know you'll get a couple of sets that work. So uh, that's it until we start the glazing process, uh, which will be next. Okay. Alrighty, so now I'm going to glaze the spout bowl. I'm going to pour the glaze on the interior, then I'm going to pour it out, and then I'm going to dip the rim in the glaze. And uh, if you're wondering about the glaze recipe, it's in the book, uh, right where I talk about the peasant wear. And I usually put a little bit of gum in this glaze and mix it fairly thickly to like an SG of around 160. Because you want a nice thick coat of glaze. I'm going to go around twice. Pour out. dip my rim. That looks pretty good. Oh my goodness, kind of got it everywhere. I'm just going to take a nice sponge and uh, get rid of the glaze on the outside. That's pretty much it. I need to go over it a couple of times and usually I have two buckets of water. One bucket of water that I use first and then a second bucket of water with another sponge to go over it just to make sure that there's, I'm not leaving any glaze residue on the outside. And then it goes into the kiln. So this was this fired at 06 so it would be extra absorbent for taking in a nice thick layer of the glaze. And now I'm going to glaze fire it to cone 04. Uh, the final firing and when you next see it, it will all be done. And that's how I make my spout balls. Pot on everyone. Mm -hmm.